I'm Steve Bayshore and we're here at the distillery and grist mill site at Mount Vernon. Behind me is the grist mill uh, where Washington's men made flour but also ground ingredients used in the whiskey distillery. And in 1799 George Washington had a pretty healthy distillery as you can see it back here. Washington built the distillery and it had five copper pot stills. The building is 75 feet by 30 feet and they did make almost 11,000 gallons in 1799. Now we make whiskey here twice a year at Mount Vernon and we're going to go inside and take you through the process of how whiskey was made in the 18th century. So we're inside the distillery now and we're over here on the mash floor where you see these large barrels and this is where the fermentation takes place. The step starts really with the boiler which is right by me and this is a 210 gallon boiler. They would use fresh water from the well out back and they would heat this water up to about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. With these large buckets with handles here they're going to ladle in about 120 gallons of scalding hot water into these barrels and the corn and rye that's ground in the mill is mixed in and rode with a large mash rake and that will then cook those two grains. So that's step one basically is to break down the starches in the corn and rye. So after the corn and rye are in with all that hot water, it'll, it'll cook overnight and it'll gelatinize. It'll get real thick and crusty on top uh, of the fermentation, but really you're going to add malted barley. So this is a key ingredient. You mix that malt in, you row it in with your mash rake, and in a few moments that thick gelatinized grainy mass that you have in here is going to be much smoother and easier to stir. So the malt activates pretty quickly. So after the fermentation is complete, all that mash or wash is then bucketed into the pot still. And the heads of the stills come off so you could pour that mash right inside the big copper pot. Once it's all filled, you put the head back on and interestingly enough, the head is called an onion and that's connected here and then the line arm connects back to the copper pipe that you see here. Now you're gonna build a fire under the still. And, and the key thing here is that alcohol has a lower boiling temperature than water. So by building a wood fire under the still, when the temperature inside here gets to about 160 degrees Fahrenheit, alcohol will change from a liquid to a vapor. So alcohol as a gas will float up to the top of the still, the water and grain stays back, and then that gas by pressure is forced down the line arm and starts to go through this coiled pipe here. That, that will then be cooled by the cool running water from the mill race, which will condense our gas, which is alcohol, back into liquid whiskey that we can drink and sell. So that whiskey is going to flow out the back over here. This here is just cooling water, so we don't want to drink that. That's water from the creek. So as the alcohol, which is gas, comes through the coil, this cool water cools the pipe. It's not mixing with what's in the pipe. It's just cooling down the pipe, which means that alcohol is now going to condense back the liquid, which is our whiskey, and that is now flowing right out the back. You can see a little modern container right here that we're catching it in today because we are in production today at the distillery and, and we'll be selling this whiskey in a few weeks. Um, but we want to make sure we get everything right so this is what we do, kind of a little bit of modern method that we do here today. Um, now you'll notice the whiskey's clear and that's how it would have been in the 18th century. They did not age whiskey in the 18th century. It was shipped to Alexandria mainly in barrels of this size but the barrels are not burnt on the inside. They're clear wood and so it would age from here to Alexandria and be tapped right away. People would drink it. Uh, in the 19th century is when the method of aging in charred oak barrels starts and that's where whi whiskey will take on a color, an amber color and a different flavor based on the wood and the charring. So but in Washington's day it was drank right away, clear as water, and the nice thing is that meant the money came right back to Mount Vernon. Unlike tobacco and wheat, which he had to wait for uh, the return, whiskey was a local market and, and a quick cash return for Mount Vernon. I hope you enjoyed seeing the distillery in operation and how we make whiskey the 18th century way. Please visit mountvernon.org for more information about sale products and other activities at the distillery and grist mill.